Welcome to this episode of the Doug Sanquist Podcast. Where interested is interesting, and interesting people share their stories and build their biographies along the way. I am your host, Doug Sanquist. I'm a dentist and a photographer, and now a podcaster. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram, at Doug Sanquist is my tag, all one word, Doug Sanquist, and on Facebook at Doug Sanquist Photo. And you can join our email list by going to DougSanquistPodcast.com. Today's guest is Dr. Carl Steinberg. Hey, Carl. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, my pleasure, Doug. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. As with all of our guests, I don't have a bio, and I haven't read Carl's bio, but I will tell you that um, I do know Carl as a fellow dentist, and he's a dentist in Philadelphia, downtown Philly, and he is also a... Um, postgraduate dental educator at um, Spear Education. And he also gives lectures around the country to teach dentists how to be better dentists. And the goal of today's podcast is to discover Carl's real biography. You okay with that, Carl? Absolutely. All right. So to start off our, uh, our uh, show today, I always I start off with 10 quick and easy starter questions. There's no maybes here. <laughs> So, yes, no, or give me an answer. So, number one is gummy bears or M&M's? M&M's. I have not had somebody pick gummy bears yet. I'm sure somebody will one of these days. Um, yeah, sweet. Ask my, grand, ask my granddaughter. Okay, all right. <laughs> sweet or salty? Sweet. Hot or cold? Hmm. Hot. Okay. Would you wear flip-flops to Disney World? Yes or no? I, I didn't hear that. Would, uh, would, <laughs> you wear flip, would you wear flip-flops to Disney World, yes or no? Oh, no. <laughs> Are you an early riser or a night owl? Yes, yep. early. Early. Short hair or long hair? I don't have many choices today, so it's short hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tattoos, yay or nay? No. No. All right. Um, coffee or tea? coffee um cake or pie cake and the bonus question is sauerkraut love it or hate it i'm not sure the word is love it but i do like it a good bit okay all right definitely lean more to love it than uh than hate it right more towards love than hate yes (laughs) okay i'll let you have that i'll let you have the little hedge there that's fine (laughs) (laughs) all right so what is your so you you were where, where were you born philadelphia Oh wow! Born, so you're born, and, born raised and raised. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't didn't really leave. That's cool. What's your earliest childhood memory? <sighs> Probably family dinners. Okay. All right. Maybe five years old, six years old. Um, I remember uh, maybe eight or nine years old being on the track team. Um, always playing baseball as a as a kid outside with other people. Mm-hmm. Did, were those family dinners like extended family or just your your uh, no, nuclear extended extended? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we Amazing. we lived in a, a small section of Philadelphia called Oxford Circle, which some people called a Jewish ghetto at one point in uh-huh. time. A lot of row houses, a lot of people, and uh, aunts and uncles lived in the neighboring streets. Mm-hmm. So we were always with um, extended family, cousins, aunts, uncles. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That sounds like a, a fun time. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, what were your summers like as a kid? Um, playing outside with the other people, going to a community pool. Um, we were always outside with other, we had so many children in the area playing base. Life was baseball back then. Mm-hmm. So playing baseball, stick ball, half ball, box ball, anything with a ball. <laughs> um, uh, Break any windows? Draw, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, not many, but yes. Oh yeah. And then we run away and. Yeah, turn on turn on somebody's garden hose to get a drink of water if you're not in your home. Right, and, uh, do those things. Um, if you ever saw the uh, the movie Sandbox, yeah. which actually took place in California, that was our life. Okay, and All growing right. up, um, vacation was maybe a weekend at the New Jersey Shore or uh-huh. a week at the New Jersey Shore. Right, and, which is what, uh, what an hour away. Um, about that. Yeah, about that. We we have a beach house and we're um, about an hour and twenty minutes away. We're sixty okay. miles from. Our house to our beach house. Okay. 
right. So um, that sounds fun. It was. It was a lot of fun growing up as a kid. We had a lot of a lot of other children around, and um, a lot of good memories. That's cool. Yeah. So, what was your first job? Uh, Paperboy. Uh, probably about twelve years old, uh, delivering papers to the neighborhood. Uh, getting up early, especially on a Sunday morning with my friend Mark, and we would go to the, I think it was called the Tuttle House, and we would get hot chocolate and um, cinnamon buns, mm-hmm. pulling our wagons. <laughs> <laughs> so you used a wagon to carry your papers? That's pretty ingenious. Yes. That's, that sounds far better than the bicycle with the bags, you know, with the bags on it, you know? <laughs> we had a lot of papers. <laughs> <laughs> so was... um. Was going to college a given? Like growing up, was that was that a, was your family like uh, driven that way, or was that were you, pretty, were you a pretty much so? Yeah, pretty much so. My brother, my brother is um, the boy. The two boys went to college, and my uh, my sister got the braces and the um, contact lenses. Okay, so she didn't and, go to uh, college. No, she didn't. I don't think she, I don't think she did. No. Yeah. No, she went. She went to work after high school. Wow. And uh, I'm the baby. My brother is nine years older than me. My sister is seven years older than me. So I was sort of a change of life baby. Mm, I got you. So how did you choose a career path? Like, how did you choose a, a degree? And what was your degree in college? Like, how did you choose? Well, I never graduated college, Doug. Did you? Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I had a desire for dentistry since high school. Okay. And I was accepted to uh, two schools, two of the three that I applied to as a third year student. How did you uh, How did you come upon wanting to be a dentist in high school? What was that? Uh, what was that? Uh, like? Actually, actually, before that, um, the dentist that I was uh, seeing, whose name happened to be Steinberg as well, um, this was a real nice person. It looked like he was having a lot of fun in what what he was doing. Uh, I enjoyed the arts and the sciences. Put it all together and decided in high school that I wanted to go to dental school. And yeah. uh, after three years of college, I got accepted. Oh wow. That's cool. It's interesting you mentioned the arts and the sciences because I think uh, it's one thing that's unique about um, dentistry that I think most people don't. Most, if you're a non-dentist listening to this to this podcast, it's easy to you know hear dentists talk and fear us all the time. But I don't think people truly understand the the art of dentistry and the science. I think it's the one profession that actually marries both of them quite Agreed. well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, agreed. others do as well, but it it you really need both for them to. It's also interesting. You're we're the same in that I only went to three years of college as well. I did not get a degree either, which is just kind of cool. Yeah, indeed, it's yeah. it's it's unique. I I you made you made a comment about the artistry involved, and I think that <clears throat> the best, the most talented dentists that I've seen are good artists, and having the artistic eye and be able to see more than just what they see in front of them. Right, and um, I've seen that over over my career many times in the people that I admire. Yeah, and yeah. I think I think one of the one of the interesting points of dentistry is that as a as a photographer, um, it's as of as you gain your your craft in photography, you you train your eye, and you're able to see you're able to see the finished product or closer to the finished product before when you're taking it. I think that actually mimics dentistry as well. I mean, a lot of times you'll, we'll, I'll see a patient and I actually know what the outcome is. It's just now my job to actually help them try to actually also see what their potential outcome is. And that's, that's one of the challenges that we, it's fun. It's also a challenge that we actually face as well. Right. Of course. And again, the, my, my experience has been that the best dentist that I've met, have other hobbies and experiences that draw on a, a sense of art mm-hmm. into their life besides their dentistry. Yeah. So, so what are your um, experiences of what are, what are your art experiences that you draw into your practice? Oh boy. Well, obviously music, I've got my guitar sitting in that to me if you want. If, uh, I, was, I think I mentioned to you, I was <laughs> working on Hotel California uh-huh. um, when I was doing that. Um, How long have you played guitar? Since I'm 12. Wow. But probably over the last 10 years is when I've taken uh, an interest to be better at what I'm doing. I was playing in a number of bands and right now I'm not. So I'm working on things where I can play songs and do things just with an an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. So working with making my acoustic sound better. Um, Let's see. Photography. 
not to the extent that you do, but uh, you enjoy it. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. for a period of time, I did that quite a bit. Um, one of my hobbies is home renovation. Oh wow! I've been. Um, I have. The, the, uh, how many kitchens have I redone? I've probably redone six kitchens. Uh, all on your own, or yeah, you, your own, your own work, huh? Not yeah, hiring somebody. With, oh, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Um, with um, people that have helped me along with it. Mm-hmm. And I've had uh, a friend of mine who was my guitar teacher be a contractor in a large project that we've done. Um, home renovations, besides that, gardening for many, many years has been a project. So lots of things to keep me busy. That's cool. I like that. So um, yeah, I can definitely see how those things actually tie into your own profession and actually, you know, it, it does help it, you know, make things come full circle, so to speak. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So what are your, uh, what do you consider some of your greatest successes? My ability to give back to others and to help others. Um, I think my greatest success is having peace of mind. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's in my mind, that's the definition of success, having peace of mind. Um, Describe yeah, peace I, of mind for me. Like, what, is that, what does that mean? For me, yeah. for me, well, it's, it's different for everybody. For, for peace of mind for me is knowing that um, I don't have to worry too much about other things. You're always going to worry about your children and you're always going to worry about things. And certainly in this state where we are now with what's going on with the uh, COVID-19 virus, there's a lot of scary things going on, but um, worry about things that you can control and change. Mm -hmm. And that's where peace of mind comes from. Mm -hmm. So it took me a while to realize that I didn't have to compete with anybody else. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that the competition was only me, peace of mind became a little bit easier Mm -hmm. when I realized that just because that person's driving a fancy car doesn't mean that they're financially sound. Right. And et cetera, et cetera. And that goes way down the line. Right. And uh, especially as a young dentist, and if if you, if you look on the internet, Mm -hmm. what other people are doing or saying or what they have, you don't know if it's true or not. Right. So the only person that you can know what the truth is, is yourself. Right. And are you being prepared for how the future takes you? And right. if you are being prepared, then that's peace of mind. Right. No one. Yeah. That's my I, definition. I like that. I think that's uh that I really, I, I really like that. I'll never forget. Um, I used to go to, when I first got out of dental school, I'd go to meetings and I would sit around at like a breakfast table <clears> of <throat> other fellow dentists. I'm sure this happens in all other, all other industries as well. But then people just sit around at breakfast and they talk about, their last week or month or whatever. And I always would feel like an ant. Like I was like, just like the worst possible dentist ever because everybody would talk about all these numbers and all this work they were doing and how successful they were and their newest car. And I was literally just very scraping enough money to get to this meetings, let alone have all of those things. And so I, I didn't want to go because these, I just felt like they were all far superior to me. And then I finally found out a couple, a little while later that, you know, most of those people were lying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And so now it's, I go to those meetings and I just assume that they're lying. And so when I, when, as soon as I assume they're lying, then I just know my own truth. And as soon as you know your own truth, then it, it doesn't, I'm not saying that they are really are lying. I just, I tell myself that they're, they're lying because that just makes me feel better. You know? Well, they may, they may in fact be lying. And I had that same uh, epiphany when I was young and I was at lunchtime in a meeting and I said, maybe I shouldn't have been the dentist. I don't play golf. I don't ski and I don't have a big car mm-hmm. and right. I still don't ski. I do play golf, but I drive a Honda, Right. but I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Right. So are you comfortable in your skin? Right. And what is successful is different for everybody. It doesn't mean that if you enjoy having the car, the house, what have you, that you're wrong. Right. God bless you. Enjoy right. it in good health. Right. But you've got to decide for yourself what are your own successes and not look at somebody else. Um, a slide that I have a lot when I when I get a chance to lecture, especially about leadership, is big hat, no cattle, which is a Texas term. Right. Yeah. It's easy to buy the big hat. Right. But if you don't have the dollars to back it up, if you don't have the cattle to back it up, 
what good is it? Right. Yeah. And I think, I think that especially in the, in the world of the internet now, and, and there's a, there's a, it's really, it's, it's difficult to be able to decipher who is really, um, telling the truth. Telling, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You don't, I mean, it, it can all be, you know, it's, it's easy to, to put a mask on, on the internet and just show what's, it's easy to look at Facebook or Instagram and like, look at, you know, look at so-and-so they're off doing whatever. And you don't really know that that person may have been saving for the last 25 years for that trip. You have no idea. You, bet. you, bet. you can't, re- you can't read somebody else's bank book. No. And uh, especially when I get a chance to talk with young dentists. Now I, t- I, I talk with them a lot about when you see things on the internet or if you go to a lecture, don't believe it. Mm-hmm. Take the concepts. Right. And then take the concepts and make them your own. And you can only believe it if you're able to do it. Right. I like that. And obviously, we, we, we spend a lot of time in Arizona working with other people, trying to help them improve from where they are to where they, they want to be. But the truth of the matter is, they can't be Doug Sanquist. Right. They can't be Carl Steinberg. They right. can take information from mistakes that we've made, and we're glad to help them. But they've got to be who they want to be, not right. us. Right. Yeah, I like I like that a lot. So, do you have any re- regrets? Most regrets that I have in my life are with that it took me too long of a time to start making a change in my life. Um, my regret about my continuing education. I wish I would have started Panky Institute earlier mm-hmm. than I did. I wish I would have started martial arts earlier than I did. Um, I wish I would have been more serious about music earlier than I did. Mm -hmm. But my favorite quote is when the student is ready, the teacher will enter. Mm -hmm. So other things happen in life. Right. I don't have any regrets other than wishing that the things that were strong in my life happened earlier. Now, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are going to talk about the spouses. I met my wife when I was 16. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm happy. With, I'm happy with that one. Yeah, I was also. I think I was 17 when I when I met my wife. So so there. There you go. A couple Good similarities. Thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so I I think that's a I I like that as well. I mean I think I think as you as we do get older, I think it's one of the it is. I think there's so many barriers that you had when you were younger that you thought I could never do that or I couldn't do that because of this, and then once you finally did it, for I mean, for instance maybe go on a trip, maybe take a small trip and take a couple extra days off when you're 25. You can't imagine taking a couple extra days off because you wouldn't be working and you have all of this debt. I think once you realize that as you get a little bit older, it's like, you know what? I really didn't need that extra couple thousand dollars to actually make everything work. It would have worked out anyways. And I think right, you know, right now we're none of us are working right now. So we've all been told to not work for two months and somehow we're going to make it. And I think if, if, if we don't we know how, it. you know, some people have much greater, much greater stress in their life during, during this period and others that uh, will able to manage it, either the financial stress, the emotional stress, but we will get through this. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, and it, yeah, an analogy I can give you is that uh, I have a, a patient who is a Holocaust sur- survivor. Mm-hmm. And for uh, three years, she was in, lived in an attic in France. Wow. And she wore the same dress for three years. Wow. So that's a little different than what we're going through. Right. But um, we will survive. Right. And like, I mean, yeah, when you think about like being in our homes for like three weeks, let alone being in your home for three years in the attic, that's... Indeed. And there's many, there's many stories like that. Right. And, um, uh, we're definitely I not there. I'll, we're definitely not there. Probably a lot of people that all listen to your podcast don't realize how lucky we are to be where we are mm-hmm. and to be able to do this and right. to realize that we have opportunities to change right. from where we are to who we want to be. Right. And at, at this point in my life, I'm ready for the next chapter of my life. Mm-hmm. And I spent uh, 40 years as my, your, your laboratory uh, stopped by and I was blessed for 29 years. I worked with the same laboratory. I worked with one person who was the only person that touched my work. Mm-hmm. And when he, um, he decided to stop and actually moved to Mexico and he said, you know, we did a lot of good for a lot of people. 
And that's something that I stick with, that still sticks with me. Mm -hmm. uh, over 40 years, I've done a lot of good for a lot of people. A lot of people have trusted me to take mm -hmm. care of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm lucky enough that I have opportunities to give back and help others. Mm -hmm. So I've had a real blessed life. Yeah. And um, as I look towards the end of it, of my professional career in working with people, I still have some time to do that. But as I still look at the end of it, I feel very lucky that people have trusted me to help them. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, other people that are listening to this will realize that um, it's not just a job. It's an ability to give back and help others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I just did a recorded a podcast yesterday with uh, another uh, Dr. Dr. Trey. And um, that, that, was, that was one of his take homes too, was like the ability to, that he didn't really realize as, as being a dentist was that he could actually um, build a relationship with these people over the lifetime and actually get to know oh, them absolutely. and actually, you know, touch them in ways that we would never imagine that we were able to, to touch them. So, so why is it that I've been invited to weddings and bar mitzvahs of patients? Because I know, because I do nice composites. Mm -hmm. No, of course not. It's, no. It has to do with relationships. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about you, the, I mean, they, they want the work to, to nobody, you know what I'm saying? No, they, they care about the, the relationship you've built with them. Of course. And you, you, to have a successful dental practice, or I'll take that back to have a successful business. Yes. You have to have a good product, but you also have to have a good relationship as well. Yeah. And, I agree with uh, that. So what is your greatest fear? I don't know that I have very many fears. Let's see. Um, I don't think I'm going to go skiing because I'm afraid of getting hurt. I think my, my, my greatest fear is maybe getting hurt and not having the ability to enjoy the rest of my life. Okay. I think that's... It's not, it's, it's not a fear of dying. Right. Because I know that's going to happen to all of us. The fear is that I won't have the ability to enjoy what I've worked my entire life to do. Yeah. So I as a result, I'm not, going to go, I'm not going to learn to start skiing at this age. Yeah. And uh, I think the, the most risk I want to take is uh, maybe taking a long golf shot over a body of water. <laughs> I'm willing to lose a golf ball. I like <laughs> that. Well, it's interesting you say that because my, my father-in-law is 80, he's 84. He's, he lives alone. Um, and so, you know, he, you know, we go in and visit him and we haven't gone in a while, but then he'll say, you know, just don't worry about me. He's like, I'm going to die soon anyways. And just, you know, he's like, again, he's not afraid of dying. And yet, you know, he goes out and he still does stuff around the house. And we're like, look, you can't, you can't go and, you know, climb on ladders and you can't, you know, you can't fix the light bulb on the ceiling. I mean, you can't, you know, and he, you know, he's like, well, I'm just going to die anyways. He's like, but he's, and then I quickly try to remind him that there's a place in between where you are now and where, and death that could potentially be far worse. So just be careful because you don't want to be in that place that could be far worse than. Uh... I agree. I agree. And uh, two, of, two of my mentors who I'm, um, who, who neither of which are de dentists are in their eighties mm -hmm. and um, they've realized that they can't do the things they used to do, but they still want to enjoy and continue to go on. Mm -hmm. And um, all of us will change. And as yep. we get older, we can't do the things that we used to do. Mm -hmm. Nor do I want to. I don't want to be 20, 20 again. <laughs> I'm real happy being 64. So I think you actually almost answered by my next question, which is what would you, what would your current self say to your young self? And I think you kind of already answered that with uh, just, uh, you know. No, I, I think I would have a, answer a different, I have a different you would? answer for you. Yeah. All right, cool. And my, my answer would be that when you're young, you think sometimes people are trying to if people are trying to help you, they may have an ulterior motive. Mm. And the answer is they may not. Right. And that was one of my barriers when I was young, that people that tried to help me, I thought there was an ulterior motive and it wasn't. They, they were trying to, to, they were trying to help because people help them. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I do when I try to help others mm -hmm. that I'll, I, I won't push. Right. But I'll say, I'm here to help if you want. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we put up that barrier to help? Why do you think that is? Why do we, or is it just because we've been sold so many things and we're Macho. Just, is it? Yeah, Maybe. It Maybe for, for me it was. Yeah. When I was, when I was young, I, don't I need thought, it. 
I don't need it. I thought, hmm, why are you trying to help me? Is this really true or not? And when I let down my barrier or let people into my life to help me, I started the Zoom. Yeah. Well, I also think another thing is I, I think it's like uh, when somebody helps you and you're younger, you, you're immediate, you're, one of your thoughts is, what do you mean I'm not good enough? So I think that's makes sense. I, I think that I think that that pops up too. I mean, it's an easy, it's a thought that, what do you mean? I, I don't know enough or I'm not, I'm not capable enough yet. So I, I don't need your help because I can figure this out on my own. And well, one of the I things I say to the young people that I mentor, and again, it's different mentoring at Spear when you're one-on-one for a few days, but people that I've worked with here in Philadelphia, and especially my children who are neither a dentist, mm-hmm. um, I tell them the story that I was afraid mm-hmm. to let people in. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, what do I have to, do to say to you, I'm not here to take anything from you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be happy to watch your successes. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously for my children, that's different. But for another dentist, there's two dentists in Philadelphia that I've mentored. And I keep telling them how proud I am of them, Mm -hmm. that they've done what they've wanted to do and they've succeeded. So that's a nice, nice thing to be able to help others. That's great. Yeah. So do you, uh, do you, do you actively mentor still today? Probably about a dozen people. Actually, before I got off, before I got onto this uh, phone call, one of the people in our study club uh, asked if she could uh, call because she's got a bunch of questions for me. And I said, mm-hmm. "Sure, I've got plenty of free time right now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that maybe some people listening to this podcast want to call up uh, Carl and have a chat. I can so reach out. We can definitely uh, we can definitely can. Uh, uh, make those help make those connections if we need to. So, any uh, do you have any greatest inspirations? great inspirations um family mm-hmm. probably my wife mm-hmm. and uh talking about where our journeys are hmm. probably my mentors mm-hmm. and uh the mentors uh, the two people that are not mentors is probably my closest friend's dad mm-hmm. who um lives in florida full-time and I really enjoy the time that we get there and uh, just have heart to heart conversations. Uh, a person who became a patient was, um, who worked right next door to me. He's in his mid eighties as well. And he's become like a father to me. Mm-hmm. Um, in dentistry, it's easy to yeah. say, say people like Gary, mm-hmm. who was, uh, I've known for a long time back from the Panky days and people in Panky um, that have helped me grow and challenge me um probably financially uh, rich green who um helped me understand money and, and business uh every time i would come back with a greater affection for my my family my patients and my team so understanding that it isn't just me right um these are people that have been my inspirations and in helping me grow and um i think a lot of self-taught reading a lot and a lot of um um, philosophy, deciding what is my philosophy in life being and open. the ability, being open to others and what others have to say and realize that it's a journey. Who you are today is not who you're going to be tomorrow. I mm-hmm. take that back. Who you are today is not who you have to be tomorrow. Right. I like because that. we do, we do have the ability to change. And I think I'm a very different person today. And uh, even in, in the years in, in my office mm-hmm. that my team can see differences in me. Mm-hmm. of who I am now from who I was before and uh, probably my children as well. How did you unlock um, the resistance to help as a young professional to actually accept that you needed help? How did that, do you, was that, was that a gradual thing or do you remember a time that you said I need help or how did you decide you needed mentors? Uh, when I wanted to grow. Okay. Uh, I, I think it happened from Panky, when I went through Panky Institute and, Way back when, when I went through, it was a, a week-long program. Mm-hmm. And when uh, I went through the program, they also had a mentoring program. So I had a list of people that I could pick from that were in my area, perhaps. And uh, I happened to choose this one gentleman, Bob Ryan, who turned out to be such a great person in my life. And, um, you know, it's the early, early things where I would say, you know, Bob, do I need to take a face bell on everybody? Mm -hmm. And his answer would be, well, I don't know. What do you think? And quickly our relationship turned into a, an incredible friendship. Mm -hmm. And he helped me open my eyes to realize that 
I needed other people in my life mm -hmm. to run things by and to ask their thoughts. Obviously, you have to be your own mentor, mm -hmm. but it's nice when you're lucky enough to have people in your life that you can talk to and you can put your hair down when I had it right. and um, ask them questions and their answers aren't going to be other than th their answers are going to be there to help you answer the question for yourself. Right. And one of the problems I get with some of the people I mentor is how come you don't answer my question? Right. You answer my question with a question. Right. And I'll say, because you have to figure out the answer. My job is to help guide you. Yeah. I think that's, I, I like that because it's, I think a lot of times we don't, we don't take the help and run with it because we're just looking for somebody to tell us what to do. And I think if you're being told, told what to do, most, most of us resist being told what to do. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, if you, you know, but if you have to come up with it yourself, I mean, you usually do it's it. A better because answer. It's a better answer. Yeah, you know? it is a better answer because it's right for you. Right. You know, people ask me my story or how did you do this in your practice or how did you that do that? And usually when I, um, work with somebody i'll say to them uh, can i challenge you and they'll say yes and i'll say okay you should challenge me because you shouldn't believe a word i'm going to tell you mm -hmm. everything i tell you was right for me it worked for me in my story but you got to figure out which parts are right for you there's a, an article i just submitted to a spear digest and uh, it hasn't been published yet so i can't give it out but the title is called are you a thief mm -hmm. and it start, and it answers i am i steal good ideas from other people Mm -hmm. and make them my own right so it's not really stealing but it's the idea of people that you get exposed to you take their ideas what has worked for them and it's only your idea when you're able to make it your own right yeah and i think you know the idea that you can that you can steal an idea is you know especially in the stuff that we do i mean when it you know systems and offices or systems and how we do stuff i mean you're just taking the idea and just molding it into your own of how, of how it makes sense for you. And if you get the idea exactly. from somebody else, then that's who cares, you know, and that we should, you know, I think that's actually the benefit of having mentors around and having people around to throw stuff off because it actually gives you another framework to actually think about it in a little different way and give you an idea to, to actually help yourself, you know, critically think about whatever you're going to do. And it gives you an, an idea to, you know, change it or morph it or implement it, you know, in a slightly different way, or even give you a little push to actually go and do it, you know, because a lot of times we don't do things because or we don't change because of fear, you know, it's like taking a week off to go to, to education is a big deal. I mean, it's a week out of no work and you're paying to go. I mean, that's a big, that's a big, uh, it's a big scary thing for lots of people. It was, it is for a lot of people and it was for me. And I'll, I'll share with you that just before the virus hit, was the second time in 40 years that I've taken off two weeks. Wow. Yeah. And actually, we didn't take off the two weeks. We came back. We were down in Florida. Mm -hmm. And we came back early because of what was going on. Right. And uh, But it was only the second time in 40 years of practice that I've taken two weeks off. Wow. And I That's... probably could have. Right. You know, would, I, would I have changed it in the past? Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I it's kind of one of those, it's kind of one of those things that I was, you know, you probably would have been okay, you know, and it's one of those things where they, if you'd made that decision tw um, t 20 years ago, you probably would have been okay then too. You just, it's just a fear of taking the time off because that's True, not who we are. At this, at this time though, I had the systems in place mm -hmm. where if I was not in the office, the patients were covered and managed. And I probably could have done that in my younger years as well. Mm -hmm. It's just, but, it's just not knowing that you could have done it. And I think that's the, that's the beauty of it. Correct. Correct. You know, everybody can have regrets. Gee, I wish I would have done something mm -hmm. differently. I bet you everybody wishes that they would have bought Amazon when they were just <laughs> selling books. Right. But, 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 yeah, it's not to be. Hey, I sold Apple stock at a hundred, so I can't really, I really can't, uh, I paid off a car. So it's, you know, it is what it is. It's all good. <laughs> you know, pr probably most people listening to this podcast have a better life than most people in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you, if you look at the entire world, uh, the practice, the profession that we're in, Doug has, has given us so many blessings that we don't even know about. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm grateful for all those things. So, you know, when people have a big house or car or what have you, 
God bless them. They've earned it. Mm -hmm. At one point, I did have 50 guitars. <laughs> I don't need 50 guitars, <laughs> but I did. What did you do but with I, them? Well, I used Sell them to, or give I, yeah, I, I'm starting to, I'm starting to get down to the few I want to keep, but I used, I was a period of time. I was rescuing them. Okay. So again, one of, one of the hobbies, I would yeah. get an old guitar and start to restore it. That's great. And, um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah. it. I enjoyed building and re-putting things back together and, and, uh, and then I couldn't sell my babies. That was the problem. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, yeah, because then you, couldn't get, you can't get rid of them, right? Cause correct. Correct. You I couldn't so get rid of them. Yeah. But I've, I've come down to the realization of, right, what is one of the things I believe sincerely is that you always want to plan what is the next five years of your life going to be? What is the next 10 years? How do you see your life? Mm -hmm. And at this point in my life, realizing that 10 years from now, I'm probably not going to be practicing clinical dentistry. Mm -hmm. I, I know that there are people in their mid-70s that practice dentistry. I don't want to be one of them. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't love what I'm doing. It's just that I don't want to smell tooth dust anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go to the next chapter. I'll probably start to still enjoy what I'm doing in dentistry and helping others, but we'll probably start to downsize. And mm -hmm. I've got to realize, all right, how many guitars do I need? Right. And, and that's what I've, I've come up with. What do I want? What do I need for this next chapter of my life? I'm not playing out anymore, so I don't need to have all the amplifiers and mm -hmm. all the different bits of equipment. Have, have you always uh, uh, lived, like, planned five to ten years out? Although, like... Um, not, not in my early days. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started to talk about mentors. Mm -hmm. And that's something I talk to people. I chat with them a whole bunch. What do you see your life five years from now? What do you see your life ten years from now? Because without having the forward thinking, you don't have any goals. Mm -hmm. And I think goal setting is important mm -hmm. in my life. Goal setting has not been, gee, I need to make a million dollars this year. Mm -hmm. My practice needs to make a million dollars. I've never in my practice have had um, financial goals. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not a bonus system person and I've never had financial goals, but I've done and acquired more things than I ever imagined as a kid. Mm -hmm. My goals have always been with, related to happiness and doing mm -hmm. things with other people. So my goal was never to have 50 guitars. It just right. happened that way. <laughs> right. And uh, so I really, I, I really like that. The goal of happiness. I think that's a, that's a, um, I really like that idea. I actually hadn't, um, I mean, I've heard it before, but I've never heard you tell, say that before. I, I actually, I really like that. Well, um, if you're not happy, it really doesn't matter what else you have. Right. Um, one of the other things, I, one of my other hobbies is, um, songwriting mm -hmm. and, um, in one of the songs, uh, it says, it's not what you have, but with whom you get to share. Hmm. And um, it's true that if you don't have anybody to share things with, what good is it? Yeah, it's true. So I get to share a lot with my family. I get to watch um, my grandchildren grow and, and um, I get to give back to my profession. I get to help neighbors and friends and it's all good. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. great. One song that I've never written that is still on my mind is, what do you want people to say at your eulogy? And um, my wife doesn't like when I write anything that has a little bit of a dark side or morbid, but I do. I think I wrote a song about my, 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 my parents and then I miss them. And uh, when my uh, grandson was born, uh, actually the first song that I recorded when I became a grandfather. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the relationship of how I feel about my, about my grandson and my father <laughs> in that song. Actually, it's on the internet called Now I Know. Okay. So, uh, right. so you can find that on YouTube. Well, let's see if we can and, pull that up. And, and if, you, if you hear me sing, you'll know why I didn't quit my day job. <laughs> 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 but uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, again, it's a part of the artistic outlet that you do, songwriting and being creative yeah. in what we do. How did you, how did you, um, how did you tap into your, I mean, obviously you were playing guitar as a kid and stuff, but how did you tap into other, other hobbies along the way? Was it, did it just kind of come naturally and say, I can do that? Or did you just kind of like just say, I need to do something else or, you know? No, nah, um, I think it developed. My, my father was a mechanic and, uh, he did things, but he never, he never, he would do, he would be the fixer man in the family. Mm -hmm. but he never took on projects as large as I have. Um, 
back in the days talking to people now, internet and, and doing things and small projects turn into bigger ones. Uh, the biggest project was um, my son bought a 150 year old house in downtown Philadelphia and we took it down to the bricks. Wow. And we had some people help us and we got some guidance, but um, did all the demolition, rebuilt the house, rewired the house. We had some contractors help us with certain things. I don't go up on a roof anymore. Right. I'm not going to do those things anymore. <laughs> has to yeah. do with, with risk great, again. The greatest fear, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't want to get hurt in that regard. I'm, I'm, I'm relatively healthy and relatively good in that regard. So um, I'm not going to put myself in that risk level of going up on a, on a uh, roof again. Um, but just doing it and learning how to do it and talk to people. It's similar to learning dentistry. Right. You know, you know, you know, everybody isn't Frank Spear. Frank, right. Frank Spear wasn't always Frank Spear. Right. He used to be a, he used to be a white belt. Mm-hmm. We all were white belts in what right. we do. Right. And uh, I studied martial arts too for many years. Okay. So one of the, one of the other art things. Yeah. And uh, that was a real big inspiration for me um, uh-huh. um, in studying Taekwondo because that helped a lot of develop my mental fitness, mm. not just the physical part of it, mm-hmm. but the, the mental fitness to know that I can succeed at what I do. And that transferred into many things. Um, I started playing golf when I was 40. And after three years, I was a 10 handicap. Wow. Because I became real intent. I had the intent to be successful at what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And martial arts helped me with that. Mm-hmm. And um, when you have the mental intent to be successful at something, you find the teachers and you find the desire to learn and to grow. Mm-hmm. So you know, the only only person stopping you from being successful is yourself. I but, I, I agree with that a hundred percent. You know, I think sometimes I think uh, it's easy to blame everybody else, and it's easy to blame find other people to to. Uh, um, put up the barriers for yourself, but ultimately Absolutely. It's, it's, it's all on you. You know, the buck stops here. Yeah. I forget which president said that, but it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the only thing that, that stops us from what we want to do is ourselves. Now, certainly in, um, I'm, I'm not going to be Eric Clapton with the guitar. Right. But by the same token, Eric Clapton probably couldn't do a root canal to save his life. That's right. So yeah. you have to be happy for where, where your skills are and what you can do, but you can get better than you are today if you choose to. Right. And that's the, that's the issue. Do we choose to? And do we right. choose to take the time and the effort that we need to to become better tomorrow than we are today? Right. I like that. I think that's, uh, you know, I'm actually in, I mean, I'm, I'm inspired, Carl. I mean, I think, I mean, go from a meathead 20 year old to like accomplishing all these things is a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool task. I mean, not that you were a meathead, meathead at 20, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, somebody was, (laughs) where's, where's Elaine? We need to get her back. (laughs) But I think, I think it's, it's something that, you know, at some point along the way you have to figure out um, how it is that you're going to, learn and how it is you're going to improve your own life and i think that's that's it never changes yeah. even even at this age uh, mm-hmm. you know what do i want for the next five years of my life and we've my wife and i've talked about that and i've talked about that with my family too because they're an integral part of what what i do mm-hmm. you know if i if i if i want to play a different style of guitar or music if i want to start to play classical guitar well that's not really going to affect them other than yeah, you know, my wife will say to me, go into another room and mm-hmm. practice. You get some Just headphones get on the amplifier or whatever, yeah. Yeah, turn down the amplifier. I get that a yeah. lot when I was <laughs> when I'm playing rock and roll. I get that. Yeah. But if 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 we decide to sell our house and decide to drive cross country for a year, well that'll affect our children too. Mm-hmm. What happens if something happens to us? Right. So at this point in my life, what the decisions we make aren't just my decisions and as mm-hmm. affects our entire family. Mm-hmm. And decisions that we make in the practice infects our team right. and our patients. Right. But that's true at, at every point of my life. The when I chose to go to Panky, go to go to Spear, and do these things to improve myself, affected my team, 
It affects mm-hmm. my patients. It affects right. our reputation. Mm-hmm. All those things. So yeah. they were they were all done with an intention to do so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's just setting the intention of what you're going to do is that's the earlier you start that, the earlier your success will be. Hundred percent, I agree. And uh, when when we talk to younger people, they don't always hear that. Mm-hmm. So how can somebody uh um find you to find you to call you to mentor? Like a website um, or an email you, address? You, or? Can, you, can, you can reach me through my office email, which is easy. Uh, dentistry in Philadelphia. Okay. At gmail.com. Uh, on there, um, if you call the phone number of the office, especially now, you get my cell phone. <laughs> my cell phone's uh, 215-530-6352. All right. um, we, can, we can chat. We can talk. And um, well, maybe we'll run into each other on the internet. I'm yeah. on a number of Facebook groups. I've done some things on the on there, and um, certainly uh, when we're back in Arizona, we'll run into a whole bunch of people. That's a fun thing when you go to Arizona and you're mentoring and you're teaching out there, and somebody comes up to you and says, "Gee, I really like what you've done on the internet. I really like mm-hmm. the the posts that you've made, or I really like the articles you've written." Mm-hmm. Um, the articles um, get a little bit of philosophy. You can even if you're not part of Spear, you can access the um, digest. They digest through Google mm-hmm. because okay. it's um, it's public, and I think they have about twenty some odd articles. And most of the articles that I've written are about philosophy, mm-hmm. philosophy of practice, philosophy of thought. Uh, there's a few technical things. One, you're asking to write more technical things, so there's some technical dentistry things too. But nobody cares about that, Carl. I anybody understand. can anybody can do all that stuff. Yeah. We want to oh, hear actually, about the, we want to hear about the, the philosophy. Well, the young people want to know the technical things. But it, we both know that's the philosophy of practice. Do you know that at, at Panky Institute, the only way that LB put his name on the door was that I think at least half the, half the courses or more had to be non-dental, had to be non-technical things, because mm-hmm. he realized the importance of everything else in dentistry than just the dentistry. I, I actually believe in, in every aspect of anything that we do, as far as it doesn't matter if it's dentistry or photography or business or whatever it it really comes down to the philosophy of you and the philosophy of who you are and how you think and how you decide to live your life i think all that stuff is way more important than the hows and the whys of what it is we do agreed so many times when when somebody is asked who are you Mm -hmm. the answer comes out what their profession is what they do for Mm -hmm. a living a dentist is what I do for a living. It's provided me with a wonderful life for me and my family. But it's not only who I am. It's mm-hmm. just part of who I am. Right. And, and, who you are, and, who, and who you are is an incredible thinker, an incredible you know, family man, and an incredible you know, member of your society, which I think is pretty cool. Well, kind of you to say. Yeah. Kind of you to say. Yeah. Well, Carl, I've enjoyed our time. Uh, we could probably talk for another couple of hours, but, you know, I don't want people to. (laughs) Yeah, we've done that in the past. (laughs) (laughs) But thank you for uh, joining my podcast today. And, um, you know. My pleasure, sir. Give my best uh, to your family. All right. Hopefully we'll uh, survive the the coronavirus uh, quarantine without too much uh, trouble. I think we will. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this, this helps to pass the time a little bit to get us through it. It does. It does. All my best to your family, Doug, and I'll look forward to seeing you in person soon. All right. Take care, Carl. All right. Take Thank care, you. Doug. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye.